First off, it's been a pretty exciting week to be a Nintendo fan. You see, obviously, we had the announcement of who is Emio, Emio, Amio. I don't know. It's a horror game being published by Nintendo. We don't know a lot about it. And then, yes, we revisited uh, some news from A.G. Aonuma a while ago that seemed to be teasing the game that's coming after Echoes of Wisdom. We laid out the decade-long evidence of basically him teasing stuff for future Zelda games coming out, whether remakes, remasters, brand new games. He teased Echoes of Wisdom last year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that was really fun as well. And yes, we'll probably dive deeper into some wants, desires, and things that we would like to see improved, changed, or just in general, what we think an Ocarina of Time remake could look like. But today, I wanted to revisit the Nintendo Switch 2 because... In the end, uh, I believe that the Nintendo Switch 2 is releasing in March of 2025. Now, look, there's going to be some pushback on the idea that the system could come out in March of 2025 for pretty good reason. And that is that, well, all Nintendo has officially said is they will have some sort of announcement related to this platform, the Nintendo Switch successor, by the end of March of 2025. So this current fiscal year. But the reason I think it's going to come out has to do with all the reputable websites that have put the reports out there. You know, back in February, when the Nintendo Switch 2 internal delay got reported on, again, it's hard to, people will argue, how could it be delayed when it never had a public announcement? That's why it's called an internal delay. But anyways, uh, a lot of outlets, whether it was Bloomberg or Video Game Chronicle, Eurogamer, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all essentially said they had their own sources independently verifying that Nintendo was targeting the Nintendo Switch 2 to come out in the first quarter of 2025, the calendar quarter, and in particular, March of 2025. And you know what? It's been, gosh, five months since those reports came out, and it hasn't changed. There's been no update. Uh, everything seems to still be pointing to March of 2025. Now, again, these outlets could be wrong. And I want to note this video is working on the presumption that so many reputable places can't be wrong. But they could be. There could also be another delay. Again, Nintendo hasn't delivered that promised piece of information on this platform yet. So we have to keep in mind that this is still technically speculation. But I do think that this speculation is well Founded, especially if you just look at things from a logical perspective. And I know one of the counter arguments to even talking about when they could be revealing Nintendo Switch 2, because yes, I do think the reveal is happening in 2024, is the idea that they don't want to tank their holiday sales. And I want to address that criticism out the gate before the comments even hit down below. And that is because. The Nintendo Switch 2 has already been publicly confirmed to exist. They call it the Nintendo Switch successor. They said there's going to be news on it. I realize that's not the same as commercially announcing something and getting it on TV and putting it in front of faces and how that could negatively impact sales. But we also have to remember what Nintendo has said about Switch this entire time. The goal of them selling Switches at this point is to get the second, third, and fourth Switch into a home. They're not seeking to actually reach out to brand new first-time customers. They realize they've hit market saturation in that way. So instead, they're looking for people to want to buy extra switches for their home. Now, what could convince people to do that? Well, obviously, we have the Hyrule Edition Switch Lite coming out in September alongside Echoes of Wisdom. That is there to be that nice collector's piece. People that want that special handheld only Zelda edition following up the Tears of the Kingdom OLED edition from last year. So yeah, obviously they could do more special editions like that, which could make collectors want to go out and potentially buy millions of extra switches just to have them in their home. Remember, Nintendo does profit off each system sale. They don't necessarily need you to buy software with it. So at this point, they're just trying to bump the numbers and make some extra money off people that are maybe trying to get extra switches. Obviously, the other way is to get people to upgrade from the Switch Lite or the version 1 or version 2 Redbox Switch to a Switch OLED. And the way to do that over the course of the holiday season isn't just bringing out a third Mario Party game, which will probably sell pretty well, or a top-down Zelda game, or bringing Mario and Luigi back. Those are all excellent games that are going to sell millions and millions and millions of copies, but most of those copies are going to be sold to people who already own Switches 
They're not necessarily going to be the way that they push new ones. So how are they going to push new sales? It's pretty simple. Guys, I firmly believe this holiday season, Nintendo finally gives us the first in eight years real price drop to the platforms. And that's really how they're going to push the sales. And they're not worrying about, obviously, Switch 2 harming you know, software sales because, again, they're probably going to be backwards compatible. So you can feel really confident buying games now because you'll be able to play them on your Switch 2 if you're fortunate to get one. I think it's also important to remember whenever you talk about launching a new platform, is anyone looking to buy a Nintendo Switch in year eight? They aren't your day one purchasers of the next big thing, right? That's just in general. Like, it, you have to look at everything. Like, just because a new iPhone came out, just because a new a Samsung Galaxy device came out, doesn't mean that every single consumer that enjoys those products is their day one trying to get one. A lot of people that are still buying these devices years down the road are not the typical people trying to get a brand new one day one. So... I think the it's being overstated the impact that announcing Switch 2 this year could actually harm holiday sales because the kind of people in year eight of a platform looking to buy Switch is looking to get something cheap with a massive library, not something that's probably going to be more expensive at $400 with a much smaller exclusive library. So again, you got to remember the kind of people buying in year eight are more budget budget conscious people that are trying to get a good value, not people trying to overspend day one so they could have a, you know, a $400 system with a handful of games. So I, I don't think there's a lot of overlap in the current market for Nintendo Switch with the people that are trying to get Switch to day one. So I, I think it's just a really overblown. And the, my evidence for this is the fact that they announced PlayStation 5 all the way back in what was that uh 2019 and they didn't release the system until november of 2020 and yet sales for playstation 4 were still very strong in those last two years because the people buying playstation 4 at, the, at that point are not the same people trying to pick up a playstation 5 day one you gotta remember the people trying to pick up a playstation 5 day one are the kind of people that was trying to get Nintendo Switch day one or PlayStation 4 day one, right? So we got to remember the day one purchasers, people like me, are the kind of people that have been there for the whole generation. Uh, look, it's not going to, like, if my children want a brand new Switch this holiday season, I'm not going to press pause and go, oh, man, let me wait and buy them a $400 system. No, they can have the cheaper system with the bigger library of games that are also cheaper to buy than the brand new thing where every game might be 70 bucks. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't really think there's going to be a lot of overlap there. So let's just get that criticism out of the way. You're free to still lobby that criticism and make all the arguments you want. Your opinions are just as valid as mine, but I wanted to provide my counter argument. Now, now we can dive into the situation with the system itself. When the heck is Nintendo going to reveal this thing if we presume all those reports are right and it's coming out in March of 2025? And there's a lot to look at here. Uh, if you look at Furukawa, he's never launched a brand new generation of hardware, so we don't know what his plans are. But the roadmap of Switch would suggest you announce in October, you do a blowout in January, and you release in March. That would literally be the Switch game plan. But the difference then was that, well, at the point that they announced Nintendo Switch, they had already discontinued the Wii U, and we're kind of marketing the NES Classic Edition as the big ticket item in the holiday of 2016. Uh, they still have a system that's probably going to sell pretty well right now, so they don't need to like rush to the market and, and, and try to like steal the holiday headlines. So I actually think they're not going to try to steal the holiday headlines. I do firmly believe there will be some sort of January blowout event. I think that's going to happen, but I do think they're actually going to announce it before October. Now, when obviously you could look at August next month, uh, they have currently no scheduled first party published game happening in August. That would also conveniently, if they announced it in August, get it out ahead of Gamescom. And you know what a lot of companies want to happen at Gamescom? Announce their games for Nintendo's new platform. It also would get it out of the way before Nintendo starts their holiday marketing in September for Echoes of Wisdom and Brothership and Jamboree. So it actually is a good way to kind of get it out of the way, let people know it's coming, let them hype it up, but then, hey, now we get to our holiday marketing before returning to Switch 2 
in January. So I do think August makes a lot of sense. In fact, looking at a potential March release, I'm starting to feel like, and the fact that they have major games to advertise this holiday season and probably discounts and bundles and everything else, I kind of think August makes a lot of sense. It gets it out before the holiday rush and on top of that doesn't get in the way of the holiday commercial season it's just hey here's a big teaser trailer like we did in october of 2016 for switch get you hyped let you know it's out there give you the name let you know when we're going to talk about it again january and leave it at that then they can just run away with the holiday marketing and once the holidays wrap up Hey, we get right back to Switch 2. And it also allows all the third parties that maybe want to do some marketing for games next year start talking about their games coming to Switch 2. I think it's sort of a win-win for everyone. But again, Nintendo doesn't always do the right thing for everyone else. They usually care about their own games and the beat of their own drum. So they might not do August. The other popular thought is they could do September, which is a typical Nintendo Direct month. But I do believe Nintendo is probably at that point going to be more focused on hey, if we're going to have a Direct, it's going to be pushing holiday stuff. This might be where we, uh, maybe they don't announce the price drop yet. They'll probably announce a price drop or switch closer to the holidays and the Black Friday season and all of that here in the U.S. anyways. But I do think that's when they're going to seriously start really pushing Echoes of Wisdom, Brothership, and Jamboree. So I, I kind of feel like they want to get the announcement out before then. And that is why I'm picking August. Now, again, we're all just guessing. None of us actually know when Nintendo is going to drop that news. And we don't even know for sure that it's coming out in March of 2025. But if we presume the reports are correct, I'm sticking my flag in August. Uh, now, look, they could end up releasing that horror game they teased that I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, MEO. They could end up releasing that in August, and that is entirely possible. But I don't think that that would detract away from a Switch 2 announcement. In fact, I don't know if anything Nintendo has coming right now. Even Metroid Prime 4 could detract from a Switch 2 announcement. So I think it's a good idea to get it out of the way before you need to market your holiday sales. Uh, if you wait and then you do it in the middle of all of that, sure, that can work as well. You could also just say, screw it. Even if we release it in March, we're not announcing until January and we do a really quick turnaround from uh, announcement to release. Yeah, that would be insane. Nintendo's never had that quick of a turnaround, but could it happen? Maybe. Maybe. So I'm just going to sit back and... Uh, see what happens, but I wanted to make my argument for August, and I wanted you guys to hear it and get your thoughts on it. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have an awesome day today. As we get to the end of the video, you know, I've already told this to her, but I'll just say it again. I want to wish my loving fiance a happy birthday today. Uh, she has turned 34 today. We're going to go out for a few drinks and celebrate with some friends and just have some good food and good times uh, for uh, her birthday. But thank you guys uh, for being here. Happy birthday to my fiance. And We'll catch you for the next video, if not tomorrow, uh, probably on Sunday. Catch you guys later.